Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It's cards. Uh, we're back with the original College Basketball 2021 from Draft Day Sports. Getting back into what we do best over here. Uh, picking back up with our North Carolina Tar Heels. And, uh, you know, anybody that's following us that closely probably knows Chris is out and about right now. Uh, so I don't know if he'll get the, the tweet or whatever out. So I don't know how people, like, find out we're live. Maybe you're following and get an email or whatever. I don't know if you saw the title of the stream from Twitch. Or, you know, you could be watching this later on YouTube, whatever. But, uh, you know, it's been a long time since I streamed this game in particular because I was bored out of my mind with this save. All I had to do was find out if we went undefeated every year and then try to win the national championship, and it was getting super boring. So this is the special uh, Cards Last Dance with the North Carolina Tar Heels. We're calling it. It's done. We're going to get through this season, and I'm walking away from North Carolina. I'm not even going to recruit in this season because this is definitive. I'm out. Uh, that's not necessarily to say this is the last episode in the, in the save. I mean, I might uh, swap schools and run two seasons tonight. My kids are gone, so uh, I can go as long as people are interested and I'm interested. Uh, I can go as long as I need to tonight. So, uh, But this is – it's official. This is the last dance. We're full on, you know, 98 Bulls. Uh, Phil Jackson has announced he's not coming back. You know, had a falling out with the AD, whatever you want to call it. This is it. One more season with North Carolina. There will be no recruiting for this season on stream. Uh, what you see is what you get here. And it's been a while since I've taken a look at this roster. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is figure out what kind of rotation we want to run. So for that, we're going to pop over into the roster screen and oh my gosh, like it's, it's been so long since I've played this on anything, but CBGM guys, if you're here and you're not in CBGM, I don't know what you're doing. Get in it with us. It's awesome. Uh, but I do really, really prefer to play this game with the one to 10 rating scale. That's a personal preference. I feel like it's a little bit, um, I, th I think in this game, it's a better reflection of their ability. I know that, you know, they they tweak the 0 to 100 scale. I still don't trust it as much as I do trust their 1 to 10 scale. But uh, love it here on the 1 to 10 scale. Let's take a look at what our roster is looking like. So the first thing I'm looking through for here is scores. I know Quentin Mansell is a senior. Uh, he's an absolute stud of a small forward, so he's like obviously a starter. And I'm just looking through here at the at the scoring ratings first, because if you got a high scoring rating, you're probably pretty solid. Look at Doug Beasley. Oh, now this is when it gets dangerous. You've got a really good scoring rating. Eight's a tremendous scoring rating. Uh, I've seen nines. I don't think I've seen. I don't know if I've seen tens on scoring, but he's also got the ten on the inside. Does this dude have like bucket? He does. He's got bucket getter. Oh my God, Doug Beasley's gonna go crazy. Let's see. How good of a recruit was this guy? Rank number eight. Yeah, he's going to be ridiculous. So Doug Beasley, I mean, the rebounds are outstanding. The defense is as good as Cardinals, uh, who is our other four-and-a-half star center. He's also a freshman. Let's see. Rank number 17. So he's a guy that might stick around for a couple of years. Beasley's for sure a one-and-done type. But uh, Beasley will be starting for us now. Do we want to play Cardinal? at the four, or do we want to play one of our natural fours? Eddie Forte is a little bit better of a defender, but Cardinal's a shockingly good rebounder out here. Let's see, what's he looking like? Maybe a decent shooter. Let's see, what's Forte looking like? He doesn't have any of the player types. He's actually not as good outside shooting. So I sort of think we want to go Beasley on the inside. We want to go Robert Cardinal at the four, I think. Mansell's clearly our three. 
so at the one and the two, what are we looking at? So Booker Jones has got a little bit better handling. Not quite as good defense as Detmer. Detmer's a better scorer. Collins is a great scorer. Ooh, let's take a look at what their individual player types here are looking like. Nothing on Detmer. Nothing on Jones. Wow. None of these guys have anything special. All right, so our guards are looking a little bit weak. But uh, just on the back of Doug Beasley, we might still just run this. All right, so let's set up our depth depth chart here real quick. Let's see if we let the AI suggest all. Detmer, Collins, Mansell, Cardinal, Beasley. So the AI has just set us up here for success right out of the gate. I really don't have to play with this much. I'm kind of mildly surprised that Richardson's not getting any PT, but, you know, it's all going to Cardinal, Beasley, and Forte. Who's playing our center? Greg Williams is getting backup minutes at the center. Uh... Beertown TV is in the chat. Curious if Draft Day is going to update the staff changes soon after the Jawan Howard incident. You know what? I haven't even been paying attention to the news. You're going to have to explain to me what happened in the Jawan Howard incident. The only like sports I've been keeping up with lately is the Olympics. Uh, I was cheering on uh, the American rock stars, the curling guys, uh, Team Schuster. Those are my boys. Uh, I love the dude that wears like the... I don't want to say mismatched shoes, but, like, they're not identical shoes, right? They're different, and uh, he's got all the you know, tattoos and the little stash and all the stuff going on. That dude's awesome. Uh, that whole team's just cool to watch. So uh, I like everything the AI did here except for what they're doing with our backup center minutes. What I would prefer to do is let's get Forte in here a little bit more. Let's see. Let's do that with him. And then we can let Cardinal be the center in these off times. So that gets Williams completely out of the mix. Oh, Juwan Howard punched a Wisconsin assistant. What? <laughs> yikes all right so apparently Juwan howard threw a punch yikes uh yeah hopefully no punches in the game i don't think that uh, like i doubt that gary's gonna implement uh like fight rating on the coaches like you know a right hook or whatever or endurance i don't think they're gonna do that but what's up breeze glad to see you in here buddy deck of cards being shuffled <laughs> you know what uh we're gonna and we're not necessarily shuffling any cars, but we're definitely going to kick that coaching carousel into gear on this one. So let's get at it, folks. Uh, if you weren't here at the beginning, Breeze, this is the last dance. This is Card's last dance with UNC. Uh, we still may stream additional uh, episodes from this version of the game or whatever, but I'm walking away from North Carolina after this season. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, like we need the like uh so we got like bucket getter and you know paint presence and rebounding and all that we need like a kermit washington attribute right or like a ron artest attribute like who's that guy uh summer camp you know we're, we're just skipping all this we're skipping all the recruiting we're going straight into the games i've already announced i'm walking away i'm not recruiting any guys in here obviously we'll let the next coach take care of that uh, we're just going out to win so Go pound on that advance button until we hit some games. It'll really speed it up. Usually recruiting is about half of an episode, so going through the games themselves really shouldn't take but about 30 minutes, maybe 45. And then uh, we can see what kind of jobs are open. Go ahead and make our pick, and at the very least... Uh, run around of recruiting at the new school so got high hopes for the stream yo we're doing good over here breeze how you doing buddy i'm definitely glad to be back up you know with uh as much as we've been dominated on here there was really not a whole lot of of drama or anything interesting other than seeing if we 
go undefeated and win the national championship. And outside of that, it was just a whole lot of wins. So that's why we're going to mix it up and uh, find ourselves a new school after this season. I always got to have something that I fidget with with my hands off camera over here. So, well, all right, let's check out the Norton list. A little Texas Tech channel in their inner CBGM here. Uh, we got both of our freshman centers in the top ten. And, of course, we got six guys nominated for the award. Forte off the bench. Medley. I don't know if he's one of our guards. Detmer's definitely one of our starting guards. Mansell, the, the small forward. And, obviously, Cardinal and Beasley on the inside. So, but it's, Plus, it's just cool for me to have a dude named Cardinal, I think. So, I'm enjoying that. Ooh, Breeze rocking the new laptop. All right, buddy. Hope you're getting some good gaming going on over there. I haven't got a new laptop in forever. Six, seven years, maybe. I mean, the last laptop I've got. Uh, might be able to see it in the background. It's over there under a laptop that my kid has, and even that's old. We got it for him for school, uh, and mine is way older than that. It was good at the time, and then like my kids sat on it, and my dogs jumped on it, and it got old, and it, it was just terrible. So I ended up the, the PC I'm playing on this. Anybody that's been following the channel for a while might remember when I had to transfer everything over off my old PC to this one. This is hmm, at least a year old, maybe pushing two years now, but still feels new to me. Uh, building a PC is the absolute best. They last forever. The one I built in like 2008 was the one I was running on up until I built this one, and it was still going pretty good, especially like for games like this. Uh, anything like high-intensity graphics, obviously, it wouldn't be able to push, but... Uh, a little bit of a RAM upgrade, and it was doing pretty solid uh, up until about 2020. So here we are. Ooh, we're in the 2040 season. We got pretty good into this one. I don't even know if I noticed it. <laughs> Looking for playing, uh, yeah, just playing a little bit more sim games there, Breeze, right? Hopefully we'll see, uh, hopefully the new Draft Day Sports College Basketball will be coming out in like the next month or so. And I think they've been previewing that. I haven't paid too much attention. Take a look here at our schedule. On the road at number three, so that would be really our only decent, uh, you know, out-of-conference challenge. But that might be an interesting one. If we can go on the road and beat Oklahoma, maybe we got a chance here. In this last dance, you know, in the, the cards last dance, maybe we can get the undefeated season and the national championship if we can get past the Sooners there in Norman. Uh, and we'll get that out of the way. I think it was a game in November. Uh, so it'll be pretty pretty quick right out of the gate. Hopefully these guys hit the ground running. I've got nothing but high hopes after taking a look there at Mr. Beasley's ratings. Having the 8 scoring, having the 10 on the inside shooting, and the bucket getter attribute. I'm almost tempted, especially with these guards. Let's take a look at strategy. I'm almost tempted to do like a favor inside type of thing. So I've got, I run my traditional motion and triangle. Got a balanced offensive focus. Offensive set is at 70. Uh, I do like that because, I mean, we are playing so many freshmen. We don't want to get up too much higher. And if anything, I'm going to drop this down to, like, I don't feel great about 60, but maybe with this many freshmen it should be 60. Mansell's really the only dude that's been around. He's the only guy that's going to know what in the world to do against his own. Uh... Yikes. Okay. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. But we do want offensive strategies. Yeah, we're at least going to favor the inside. Do we want to go... Actually, you know what? This dude's a monster. We're going heavy inside. Because these guys out here, they're, these guards, they're freshmen. They don't have good attributes. Like, let's let Beasley carry us to the promised land, right? We're going heavy inside. I've never gone heavy either way. I've done favor one way or the other, like if I felt particularly good about one or the other. But I've never gone heavy. Uh, so we're going to try it out. And you never know. We might crash and burn with that. I haven't tested out. I've, I've tested out all of the, like, recruiting and all that sort of thing. I never got into, like, trying out the different strategies all that much. Uh, I know some of the things that don't work. Uh, but, like, in CBGM, people are always pulling out cool strategies that are just dominant, game-breaking in some cases. Uh, I never played around with any of that stuff. It didn't interest me. I just wanted – I like these games as, like, roster builders or, like, 
program builders or whatever. So I like that aspect of it, the recruiting and, you know, simming 20 seasons and getting the history of it, uh, finding out, you know, what press or what uh, outside shooting percentage, like uh, those kind of things never did it for me. But for some people it does, and it's very effective when they find it. Uh, just as an update, we got the uh, Founders Porters here. My sweet baby Jesus Duclaws were not at the uh, store when I ran up there about an hour ago. So I'm kind of heartbroken about that, but Porters is a good old trusty standby. Let's get into this season. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's get on the hardwood. Start making it happen here. So we got a couple extra viewers, a few more people jumping in. Just one more reminder for anybody that's late to the show. This is the last dance. This is the only, uh, this is the last season we're going to be running here with North Carolina. Me and the AD had a falling out. I'm going to find a new job after this season. I have no idea where it's going to be, but we're probably going to stream at the very least the recruiting at the new school. Uh, might run a season at the new school. I've got all night here. Uh, so just as long as people are interested and I'm going, uh, we're going to go. So we'll see how far we can get. I don't want to don't want to limit myself as far as that goes. We're the number one team in the country, starting it off against Houston, baby. I think, and I think, all right. So we're going to be at home against Houston, then at home against South Carolina, and that's after that we go straight to Norman and have a huge game. So let's see how this works out. My very first time playing around with the heavily favor the inside. Uh, but it's going to play out. As long as Beasley's healthy, we're going heavy inside. We're riding that horse as far as he can take us. Let's see if he can get us a win right out of the gate against the Houston Cougars. Yeah, he does. 29 points. Collins jumps up for 22 himself. So even though we're going heavy on the inside, Collins still found a way to score 22. And we're off the mark here. Off and running. 14, was it a 14 point win? Uh, it, whatever it was, it was decent. It wasn't too awfully close. I would have liked to have won by a little bit more uh, at home. Uh, but, you know, that was probably a pretty good Houston team. We'll see. We'll see what we can do against South Carolina. They're 0 and 1. Maybe we can put a nice drubbing on them. I'm interested to see when we go back and look at this entire thing uh, how well Beasley does this year compared to like all of the other players we've had come through because we've had some shockingly good players in this 20 years that we ran this all right so at home a little carolina on carolina action here and beasley only 19 points uh the outside guys played along well but you know we shut down south carolina almost a 30 point game there so that one wasn't even close and here we go out to norman to play the sooners they're actually one and one so they're the third ranked team in the country but they're one and one. They've already lost a game. So this will be interesting. Can we go on the road with this young team? Because I think we're starting Manziel's a senior. Then I know we're starting two freshmen on the inside. We're starting one freshman guard and I think one sophomore guard. So a very, very young team, which is why we dropped it all the way down to 60% on the offensive set ratings. So let's see. This is obviously our big, uh, our big out of conference hurdle at North. So okay, so Oklahoma already dropped down with that one loss. They've dropped down to number twenty-two, and we've dropped down to number four uh, because reasons. <laughs> the uh, the rankings are notoriously pretty all over the place early in this. Teams just go up and down for no particular reason. Um, at least the first month. Once we get into it, it gets a lot more true to life, but. Early, they'll just drop us like that. Uh, let's see. Maybe maybe it was a, you know, what, what do they call it? Like preconceived? Or maybe somebody had a vision, right? Like they got whoever's doing the polls can see the future or some nonsense. But uh, let's see what happens. The Tar Heels, the Sooners in Norman, Oklahoma. Beasley was held to 10 points, but the senior, Quentin Mansell, 21. We get out of there with the five-point victory. And now we're at Ole Miss, who's 2-1. and one. Then we go home against Auburn, home against New Mexico State. 
So maybe a little bit of something to think about here against Ole Miss, who might be decent on the road. You don't want to overlook that. Uh, anytime you go into uh, Oxford, uh, you know th- those SEC teams, they're no joke. They're always super athletic. They don't necessarily have, you know, outside of Kentucky, Florida, and maybe Arkansas, they don't necessarily have the history. But, man, they've got some great ath- athletic teams, some great athletes. Breeze, you've never gone undefeated in, in this game? That's all right. It happens every now and then. It's happened to me rarely. But, again, like I said, you know, there's definitely people out there that go undefeated way more often than I do. They, they perfect these strategies and whatnot, and uh, that's just, that just doesn't do it for me. I like to, to play fast and loose, get a, little, get a little bit of a role play experience out of it. But here we go into Oxford against the Rebels, probably our last real test until conference play. No test at all. All right, so Robert Cardinal got in, picked up an injury there, but Beasley led us to victory. It looked like a pretty easy victory. Let's check out the dashboard, see what this injury looks like. Strained abdominal, nine days. We're not even going to touch our rotation for that. Not a problem. Not worried about it. Uh, going up here against Auburn, 0-3 on the season, coming into the Dean Dome. I don't need to worry about that at all. Now, we do have the Hoosiers coming up, so that – Could theoretically be interesting. Uh, But it's going to be a home game for us, so we should be all right. In theory. But I'm really excited to play Auburn. I want to see how bad we can run it up on them. I want this to be a 40-point game. I want Beasley to just go the F off, right? 40 points. Let's see it, Beasley. 40 points. We're going heavy inside. Robert Cardinal is a little bit dinged up. He's, you know, his belly hurts, whatever. Beasley's going to do it. Look out for Beasley. Oh, that was a close one. Beasley did drop 20. We only, we only beat Auburn by 11. So, I can't lie, I'm not impressed so far. We should be beating some of these teams by more. Uh. I feel like I should be getting like 30-point games out of Beasley instead of routine 20-point games. With the heavy inside, with the 8 scoring, the 10 on the field goal inside, the dude should be tearing it up. I wonder if maybe his like draw foul rating is low or if other people are getting a lot of shots. We might have to take a look at a couple of box scores here, uh, see if we're missing anything, see if there's a tweak that we can make that'll uh, just sort of juice him up. Look at that. New Mexico State at 6-1 and one is now ranked. So maybe not quite the uh, coast toward conference play that I thought it was going to be. Ooh, Jason Hasty, that's a cool name. Love to have a fast little guard named Hasty, right? Like, can you imagine if, if anybody that like follows college basketball? Remember like Russ Smith off of Louisville? Like, if his last name, had, if he'd been like Russ Hasty, how cool would that dude have been? Like, not that Russ Smith wasn't cool. He was the man. But he was so fast and, and like, creative with the ball. Had he been named Hasty, like, it would have been next level. There would be an entire generation of kids that would have been all over Russ Hasty. Which reminds me, I'm going to have to, anybody that's, you know, that is in CBGM knows we picked up that name mod, whatever, like, get some more interesting names in there. And I think that's going to be one of the things that I'm going to have to pick up uh, going. Well, actually, I, I think it might have been integrated into the base game. Uh, anybody in chat that knows whether or not that name database got integrated into future versions of DDS, like officially, or if that's a mod that's available, I'm not certain. I know we're using it in CBGM one way or the other. Uh, New Mexico State versus North Carolina. Home game for us. Let's see if we can stay undefeated here early in the season. No, we can't. Disaster in the Dean Dome. So, you know, as you can see, this is why, you know, this is the kind of uh, fallout you have. You you know, it's the last dance. You're walking off. The AD, there's all this drama. The head coach is leaving. And then you drop a game like that. So that's absolutely ridiculous. Let's find out what happened and what is happening, because I'm really not enjoying our results so far at all. Mansell goes, like, why? 
why if I'm going heavy inside, why are we shooting between just between Mansell and Collins 17 threes? And it wasn't like you were feeling it. You're one for nine, two for eight. Like, what are y'all doing? Robert Cardinals hitting it on the boards. Uh, Beasley, not great, to be honest. Six of 15 is pretty disastrous. I don't know what in the world he's doing. So, right out of the gate, I'm going to back off of this heavy inside and just go favor inside and see if we can get some better results. I haven't liked what I've seen so far at all. All right, so no undefeated season. You can throw that right out. Lost a home game to a decent team, New Mexico State, uh, in the top 20. But that was really, really disappointing. Can't lie about it. Usually the road games can be tough, but the home games really – I don't even know when the last time I lost a home game on this stream was. I mean, obviously I haven't streamed it in a while, but, man, I'd have to go back and look. I bet it's been a long time. There's Jason Hasty again. Maybe we need this dude. Maybe we need some transfers. Get some fresh blood in here. I do think having the like super freshman guards, not having any experience at the point guard position, I do think those sort of things are hurting me right now. Like playing such a young team, but they're so talented, especially Beasley. But you know, I mean, maybe we should be relying a little bit more on Quentin Mansell, the senior all the experience and it's not like he's untalented but of course that's the frustrating thing about this stream in particular is once we once I drop a game like what else matters until we hit the tournament right but maybe we can you know run through the ACC undefeated something like that get some good games out of it but first we're going to get we're going to have to play the Indiana Hoosiers off to a good start 6 and 1 on the season. They haven't won on the road yet. And they still haven't. But again, where is Beasley? Robert Cardinal showed up. Big game on the backboard. Cleaning up the glass. Where's Beasley? 3 of 3, 5 of 6 from the free throw line, 11 points. Okay, kind of pedestrian. Like you're supposed bro, you're supposed to have the bucket getter but only 16 minutes. There it is. We're looking at probably some foul trouble in the first half for Beasley. Would be my theory. Unless he's hurt. But I didn't get an email that he was hurt, right? No. So Beasley just ran into some foul trouble there. That's why he had an off game. No but no worries. Nothing long term. Pick up the win. Move on. This team is very, very much underperforming though, if you ask me. Like, I thought a lot of, I thought, like, this team should have just, is just filled with ridiculously good players. But maybe those, maybe the guards are holding us back. Like, we don't have the experience at the guard position. We don't have, um, we don't have, like, a superstar one-and-done freshman. We got decently talented guys, but we don't have, like, that, that dude, right? So, you know, if you don't have experience and you don't have ridiculous freshman talent, eh, maybe you struggle a little bit. Let's see how this continues. Starting to get Boston College popping up. We're getting here close to the end of December, so we are very quickly approaching some conference play. We can see it start off conference play at Boston College. First got to get past Michigan and Oregon State. All right, so let's see if we can get through the rest of the out-of-conference and not drop another game. Roll on into the ACC with just the one loss. And maybe some of these freshmen, you know, the scary thing is they're going to get better throughout the season, right? Like, if you look, like, remember, go back earlier in the stream. All these dudes who are, you know, freshmen, 30, 25, 30, these were all 10s earlier in the stream, right? So... They got into practice and started learning this motion and triangle. And then throughout the season, these should increase. If I remember toward the end, uh, I'll bounce back in here and check on these. I've always noticed, like, they talk about guys that you play get better in this game and you want to find minutes for guys who you want to develop. And I think that this is at least part of that, you know, equation is that they pick up the offenses quicker as they play. So we'll jump back in and see what that looks like. 
uh, toward the end of the season, if I remember. And if I don't, somebody in chat yell at me, please. Woo! That's what we're looking for, baby! 42 points against the Wolverines. So my apologies to Gary. Uh, we, we did to the Michigan Wolverines what we should have been doing to every team the entire season. That's what I thought we were going to get every game. So why that's the first time we're seeing it, I have no idea. But there it was. Nice little 40-point beatdown. And uh, you know, that's what I want to personally walk out on. We're talking about my last dance here with the Tar Heels. I want a bunch of 40-point games. That can't be the last one. All right, Oregon State. Can we go back-to-back? -back? Make another team cry. Like, I want the Oregon State fans turning off their TV at halftime, like flipping it over to the Olympics, flipping it over to something else. You, you don't want to watch this basketball game, Oregon State fans. Oh, this is actually this is a tournament. Okay, so this isn't at home necessarily. Uh, we'll probably actually get a couple of more games before Boston College, assuming we win. 65, all right, 25 points. All right, Eddie Forte got an injury. Beasley played another crap game. What happened there? 20 minutes, foul trouble again. Like, look at the fouls on our 3, 4, and 5. Beasley, 20 minutes. Cardinal, 17 minutes. So we went heavy with Forte. He picked up four fouls and then got hurt. Let's see what that injury looks like. Hopefully it's nothing too bad. Hamstring. All right. So, you know, this is our rotational guy on the inside. He is playing pretty heavy minutes. I wonder if we should get Richardson a little bit more involved. Yeah, let's see here. Let's just flip these two for now. And give Richardson all these minutes. And you know what? Maybe when he, maybe when Forte gets healthy, we split that up a little bit better. Uh, and then we can run Forte and Richardson both, maybe? I don't know. We can see if Richardson has any big games while he's getting his opportunity. So Colorado State coming in with 24-point beatdown. There's Beasley with 24 and 12. Alex Collins gets his 15. Evan Detmer. So close to the double double. You don't you don't get closer than that. Nine points, nine assists out of the freshman. So nice game there for Evan Detmer. And now what are we picking up here? Ole Miss again. So we went into Oxford, took care of business. Now we get them in this tournament on a neutral site, take care of business again. Beasley doing his thing, but Robert Cardinal with 17 rebounds. Good lord. Dude, you do not want to be trying to rebound against Robert Cardinal. He's ridiculous. And that's my boy. That would be like... Having him on Louisville would be so awesome. I desperately need to get a guy with the last name of Cardinal at Louisville at some point. So I don't know. Is Louisville on our list of what we might go to after our last, you know, our... Uh, finale here with the Tar Heels maybe it's on it's it's not off the table we'll see what's on the table when we get to the end here and see what jobs are actually available I uh, got a few teams in mind that you know we kicked around we actually talked about it in the last stream I know it's been a while but if you were here you may remember all right ACC play opening up we're 10 and 1 headed to play Boston College taking care of Be Beasley with 22 and 9 Evan Detmer with 24 these freshmen are getting their sea legs they're ready to go. We're we're picking it up. Picking it up, ladies and gentlemen. We're cruising here. December 30th, almost the new year. We're done playing games in 2040. We're moving on to 2041, ladies and gentlemen. What is this? So what, like the 20th, 21st season that I've streamed out of this? You know, I know we talked about when I started off getting it to 50. And I think, you know, it's just my, there's Jason Hasty again, my boy. It's my new favorite player. Mary Mike lost, but Jason Hasty's going off. Uh, it's my own fault. I went to UNC and started dominating and got bored of the save and so didn't stream it for like three or four months, however long it's been. Could have been longer, I don't know. So, tried to bridge the gap a little bit with some uh, football manager, but, you know, 
Draft Day Sports to College Basketball is where it's at for me. That's my that's my sweet spot. It's what I'm actually decent at. I'm terrible at football manager. <laughs> I'm not great at most of the other Draft Day Sports games. Uh, this is sort of my jam. But let's see here. At Miami. Whoo! Beasley getting big on them. Collins and Detmer doing things as well out there on the perimeter. Yeah, Draft Day Sports College Basketball is definitely my jam. It's what I enjoy streaming the most. Just need a save that I'm invested in. And that was where this one fell flat was I was just crushing people in North Carolina. So we got to get out of here. You see doing things. It's one of the one of the jobs that I'd mentioned before that I might have a little bit of interest in. Oh, 95. Beasley, 23. Robert Cardinal. Everybody we needed to step up, stepped up right there. But anyway, I'd mentioned UC before, you know, I live like 15, 20 minutes from their campus. So it was on my radar, but they're looking ranked. They're looking like a good program. So might not be an option. Now, Louisville's, they might be falling off. Maybe there's an option. You know, and I haven't even, I know for a fact I haven't streamed since Chris Mack got fired from Louisville. So, you know, Josh Hare, the, the Louisville AD, I know he's probably not looking to YouTube or Twitch for their next coach, but hey, your boy's available. This is my last dance with UNC. I'm happy to go coach Louisville. As you can see, I mean, I've got a track record of success. 75-60 there against Virginia. Uh, something tells me that actual college basketball coaching doesn't work that way. I'm probably not going to be hired as Louisville's next head coach. But, uh, you know, it worked for some guys in football manager. I know a guy sent his football manager resume into a club and got hired as some kind of, like, data analyst. So, you never know. We're, it's not out of the realm of possibility. All right, so now we're going to go into Louisville. This is my time to debut. You know, show off a little bit. Josh, if you're watching, this is what I can do for your program. So we're headed into the Yum Center. Louisville struggling at 7-6. and six. North Carolina's cruising so far. Only the one home loss to New Mexico State. 14-1, and one, undefeated in ACC play. The Tar Heels and the Cardinals, and it's the Tar Heels by 14. Doug Beasley, Quentin Mansell, just going off. So I cannot wait until the Norton starts popping out. And we see where Beasley is in these standings. And Mansell, for that matter. Mansell's had every bit of as good of a season as Beasley. Even though we're kind of trying to feed the points through Beasley. Like, Mansell's like, no, I'm a senior. I know the offense. I'm leading the team. Give me the rock. So, Mansell's doing well. Beasley's doing well. And then Robert Cardinal on the back, on the, you know, cleaning the glass grabbing the rebounds. What's this incident? Calvin Anderson and Earl Hughes. I don't even know who either of you are. Do I even care? Anderson and Hughes. Can I just kick them both off the team? Hughes is a walk-on. Calvin Anderson's a freshman. Uh, hey, you know what? Where is the uh, roster? Sometimes you get a little... A uh, little glitch there where the roster doesn't load up. Just click off, click back. Then you can click on this guy, and if you hit this button right here, you're gone. Get out of here. You can't be having fights when you're a walk-on. You're not getting any PT. You're at the very end of the bench, not on scholarship, and you want to start, start picking fights? Like, I don't care if it's my last season or not. You're out. Get. All right, so Hughes is off the team. Troublemaker gone. Maybe even at 14 and 1, 15 and 1, what are we at? 15 and 1. We're 15 and 1, 5 and 0 oh in conference play. But maybe Hughes, the walk on jerk, was uh, dragging us down. So now we're going to get an invalid roster setting because I'm sure that that dummy was one of our scrubs. So who do we want to get that scrub time now? Right there, Ivner. I mean, he's the lowest guard in the rotation. That's all we got. All right, Miami, we've already played them on the road. So now we get them at home. We do things to them. Doug Beasley goes 21-19. and 19. Robert Cardinal looked like he had a big game. I think it was 17 points. I didn't catch the rebounds. But my big men are doing big men things, big men stuff. Uh, oh, look at NC State, also at 15-1. And, and Duke 
number – so Duke is number four. NC State's number six. We got some real games coming up here, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I thought we were kind of cruising for a while. I, I think the cruise is about to hit some bumps in the road. We're going to have NC State at home, which has already proven not to be a guaranteed win this season, or as you saw earlier. So that's going to be a problem. And then we got to go to Cameron Indoor. All right, so first let's get this out of the way. Florida State, they just don't look like a very good team. Uh, we put it on them. Nothing of note there statistically. Moving on. Now... We've got the Wolfpack coming in. Woo! My, one of the dude I used to live with, we play NCAA football all the time, and he would just do this like, oh, how nonsense when we would be playing. He was always NC State. It drove me insane every time he did it. So that's, sorry, flashback from my childhood there. I uh, wasn't trying to do a Ric Flair, even though it feels like that's how it came off. All right, so let's see what we get. Wolfpack, Tar Heels. We've already lost at home this year. It can happen. We're vulnerable. Uh, but these freshmen have really picked it up since then. So let's see. Like, hold down your home court, boys. Hold it down. Take care of your business. NC State, North Carolina. Woo! Six-point victory. All right, so we do have an injury there. Beasley didn't quite get the double-double, but him and Cardinal both fought. We get the six-point win. But we have another injury here. So, let's see, is it Booker Jones with the sore hand? No, it was Medley is what I got. To, and that's just a sprained ankle. So, again, uh, not starters. We can just roll with that. You know, if they're at 90% while they're playing eight minutes a game, whatever, that's fine. We'll, we'll make do with that. So, we snuck past NC State. You know, maybe a little bit of in-state rivalry going on there. Maybe a little bit of nerves. But we got past that game. We held serve in the Dean Dome. And now, guys, if you weren't excited before for any other game, here it is. The number two North Carolina Tar Heels. The number four Duke Blue Devils. The Tar Heels come in 18-1. and one, The Blue Devils 17-2. At Cameron Indoor Stadium. So we're headed on the road to take on the Dukies. You know college game day's there. Dick Vitale is over there just losing his mind. It's the biggest rivalry in college basketball. The Blue Devils and the Tar Heels. Robert Cardinal, this is the only time you're ever going to go to Cameron Indoor. Beasley, the only time you're ever going to go to Cameron Indoor, you you boys are one and done. The diaper dandies. Uh, make it count, boys. Remember where you're at right now. Ah, oh, they got us. Couldn't make it happen. Mansell, the senior, valiant effort, but we fall to Duke on the road, 79-72. Not a shock. Not a shock, but would have been cool to win. We're going to get it. I'll want that game in the ACC tournament. I want that on a neutral court for the ACC banner. I want the Dukies again. Like We're going to get them at home. That's fine. We'll get our redemption. But I want that rubber band match. I want that, that third game in the ACC tournament. I want to do it to them. All right, second loss of the year, first loss in conference play. <clears throat> All right, let's push on. What are we, 18 and 2 overall, 8 and 1 in conference. So, about, I think that's exactly halfway through conference play. Headed on the road to play Pitt, uh, 13 and 6. It looked like they already had at least three or four, I think four and four in conference was pit so hopefully uh, we can pick up a win on the road here but again nothing guaranteed we're probably i feel like in the road games you rely a little bit more on those upperclassmen so hopefully quentin mansell has himself a game here against pit 25 point win no it's beasley it's collins and it's detmer so <laughs> just the second like 
I talk about I don't know everything about this game, right? Like, I'm not any kind of expert. I just enjoy streaming it. Uh, so <laughs> I say, oh, we're going to have to rely on some seniors here. And immediately all the freshmen are like, we got this. And the freshmen go off, lead us to the big win there against the Pitt Panthers. And now we got the Hokies, 12-6 and 6, uh, home game. Hopefully we can you know, take a deep breath. Then we got to go to Clemson, and then we have the rematch with Duke. So right there, circle that one on your calendars. Coming up here in about three minutes. Virginia Tech in the Dean Dome. Thanks for coming. 14-point victory. Beasley with 19. That's fine. We're going to go to Clemson. Hopefully, <laughs> got to rely on those seniors. Or, you know, or the freshmen will just do it. Whatever. We're going to go to Clemson. They're not a great team. Hopefully, we get past that. Don't overlook them. Just going to pop over here, see if there's anything. Maybe some Norton Award. Yeah. Beasley and Detmer are both semi quarterfinalists. Sorry, quarterfinalists. So we're down to 30. Detmer's way down the list. Beasley is third on the list. So Mansell is nowhere to be seen. But Beasley's right up here. And so we're toward the end of January. Let's uh, delete all the emails and take a quick look here. Mid-season. Uh, see what our guys are averaging. So Mansell only averaging 12 a game. Two assists, three rebounds. Nothing crazy there. Beasley averaging almost 17 with seven rebounds. And then Cardinal only seven points, but just about eight rebounds. Collins is averaging 13. So Collins has actually scored more than Mansell so far. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, three assists, three rebounds a game. Over here, Detmer with five, close to five assists, three rebounds a game. So Detmer's playing well, for sure. Uh, don't know where he's getting the ten points. So he definitely can't finish on the inside, so I guess he's just out there shooting jumpers. Uh, but ten points a game, that's cool. He's got the passing, ball handling not quite there. Collins, good score, very good outside shooter. And Collins is a sophomore. I think I've been talking about him as being a freshman the entire time, but Collins is a sophomore, so that's yet another mistake by your boy cards. <clears throat> all right. Get to all right, you see dropping a game at T Temple's rank number three. Is that what that said? All right, so North Carolina headed to Clemson, taking care of business, Mansell. There it is. Now, why didn't I talk about how you how much you need senior leadership on the road before that game? That's the one where Mansell shows up, goes for 20, was it 22? So, like I said, senior leadership on the road. You got to have it. No, it is great in this game to try to mix in, like, grab a couple of those superstar freshmen along with a couple of senior leaders. That's when you're going to go just off right it's like those freshmen they're probably going to be more often than not they're going to be solid but they're going to have their freshman games right that's where you hope you got those seniors like mixed in with it like you get that perfect mix and then somebody you always have someone available to step up whether it's one of the talented freshmen whether it's the senior leadership either way uh when you get the well, cincinnati dropping again maybe we still do have a chance to be a bearcat uh, we're, we're already into February, guys. This job decision is going to be coming up soon-ish. Uh, probably 15, 20 minutes. We've got, what are we at here? It's 11 and 1. we got six conference games, and then you hope three or four, uh, probably 10 total tournament games, ACC and NCAA combined. So 14, 15 games to get through here. And then it's going to be decision time. We're going to be finding a new place to uh, take our talents, right? Landis in the chat had a problem with this game. Wouldn't load. Save with San Jose State. Had to uninstall and reinstall. Oh, yeah. If you haven't played it for a while and you're getting back into it, I mean, that's what I'm doing. I, I haven't played it in a while. I'm trying to get back into it. Uh, and it, it's a fantastic game when you're in the mood for some college basketball, right? There's nothing else out there that does it for me like this. But now, here we go. Time for redemption. Our only loss in the ACC 
so far has been to Duke on the road. Now we get them at the Dean Dome, right? We're, we both have one conference loss. So this game, whoever wins this game, should be first place in the ACC. We've got the home game. We need the tie break against them, to be quite honest, because who knows? We could still drop another game. You know, we probably still have NC State on the road. Uh, you know, we st- There's still some landmines out there for us. So we need this one. It's big time. We've done it once. We went to Cameron Indoor, came up just short. Beasley, Cardinal, Mansell, like, do not lose twice to Duke in one year. Can't do it. You can't do it. Ah, dominated them. Went beast mode on them. 22 points. That's how you play angry, ladies and gentlemen. Get it. Woo. Put it on them, buddy. Landis says he's been playing football manager. Hey, football manager is a fantastic game. You know, that's a great way to, like, you build the roster and then you actually get to watch him play. And Not that you can't watch him play in this game as well. You can. But I don't... I don't know that the engine on this, on the 2D Sims, it is the focus as much as that engine is the A focus of Football Manager. Um, you, know, I've, you, you watch those guys play in Football Manager, and you can really see where every single attribute comes into play, right? Like if your guy sucks at finishing, uh, he's going to get in there in, on a one-on-one with the keeper and just sail one over the net. Uh, so, the, you know, this – it's fantastic, but I don't think it has, like, it's not quite to that level on the 2D sim yet. Uh, so it's really enjoyable to watch some of those football manager games, certainly. I enjoy playing that a lot. And I'm, I am definitely still actively playing that. I thought about streaming that tonight, but I was like, you know what? Uh, we can do some college basketball. It's been a minute. You know, we can come up with something, make it interesting. Uh, but, you know, keep your eyes peeled. We'll be, I'll be back on football manager, certainly. I guarantee I'll stream that again. Landa says, you've been managing in Germany and England. You know what? In Football Manager 2020, I did Kaiserslautern in Germany, and I thought that was absolutely awesome. And I didn't realize how good I had that team. Like, they were in great position to start like, competing for, uh, you know, spots in Europe. Uh, I had them right there with, you know, Dortmund and, um, oh, jeez. Uh, is it Bayern Munich? You know, whatever. I had them right at the top of the Bundesliga and then moved on to 22 and took over. Well, who am I running in 22? I know I'm in England in 22. Uh, the Cottagers. Fulham Cottagers? Uh, you know, in Football Manager, what I like to do is get that youth league set up and then watch my youth intake players take over the team along with, like, the guys that I bought from, you know, where everybody's buying players, Brazil and Argentina. But back to college basketball, we've got the Orange coming in to North Carolina and getting sent right back out. My goodness, 102-55, to 55, that's a beatdown. We nearly doubled their score, and it's not like they only scored 30. Jesus, we smoked them. Uh, but yeah, my my Fulham Cottager save is is getting to the point where I had Kaiser Slautern. So uh, I'm starting to see all that talent grow and develop. It. That's really cool. Let's check out this dashboard here. Chris Medley took an injury for the second time this year. And it's, again, rather mild, sprained wrist. So we're going to be all right with him. He's just backing up Mansell anyway. He's not playing a ton of minutes. We're good with that. Got a couple, uh, three, our three next games, none of them are ranked, so. Whew. I will tell you, anybody that's watched any of my other streams on Football Manager, I did have uh, Lorenzo Luca as the big, huge target man out front. I told Chris to just make him the uh, mascot of the entire rest of my Football Manager streams. And, of course, he was instantly purchased by, I think it was Man United. Uh, so lost out on him. Luckily, I'd paid like $50 million to grab another Wonder Kid striker, uh, and the name's not coming to me offhand, but he's definitely not a big six, seven ridiculous target man the way that Luca was. So not only do I have to suffer the indig- indignity of him being bought away, but now i got to play him every year. So it's just salt in the wounds, to be quite honest. 
Benjamin Sesco. That's the striker that I've got running now. And then I've also got Justin Deal, who's uh, not quite as talented, but I purchased him out of Germany, actually. Uh, so I've got him just kind of playing in the background, and I need to grab some more talented striker for sure. Here we go. Pitt in North Carolina, 11-point win. Alex, Co Alex Collins has been scoring for me all year. So I don't know what happened to Beasley. Need to check the email, see if he's still in the running for the Norton. Look at New Mexico State. But they've got five losses. Man, they should have six. Oh, that's frustrating. All right. Beasley was a semifinalist. All right, so he's still fifth on the list. He's still right in the mix. But he's obviously fallen down the list a little bit. And I really don't think he's a real contender at this point. But yeah, Landis, keep an eye on uh, the notifications from GM Games because I'll definitely be streaming more of my Fulham save eventually. His football manager still got a long way to go before they hit another version. So I'll be with Fulham for a long time. Hopefully get them into Europe. I think they're close. North Carolina, Florida State, taking care of business. 21 points. Beasley, there it is, 28 and 13. That's what I'm talking about. That's what that dude should be doing every single game. I really thought Beasley was just going to be like averaging 25, 30 points a game. Maybe we got to get up to that. Maybe we need uh, the scoring to be at nine for him to get that outrageous. I kind of thought with the eight, with the 10 field goal inside and the bucket getter, I thought that would combine to be a little bit more than what he's doing so far. Although sometimes, you know, I actually think part of what might be holding him back is that Robert Cardinal is so good rebounding because I do feel like a lot of times you'll find centers, if you can grab an inside dude, even if they don't have a great scoring rating, if they have a really good field goal inside rating and a really good rebounding rating, they get a lot of putbacks, like an offense, a really good offensive rebound rating. They can get some crazy numbers uh points wise just off easy putbacks so maybe the fact maybe cardinals in there like grabbing some of those easy ones and uh you know oh boston college is four and 21 wow that's brutal four and 21 jeez all right put it on him 93 to 53 mansell does his thing beasley grabs 11 boards yikes Four and twenty-two now <coughs> for the Eagles. Uh, that's just pathetic. All right, sixteen and one. Where we have one, no, three more ACC games. All right, three more ACC games. Then we'll jump into some tournaments. See how that goes, and then we're going to be NCAA tournament. Maybe one more national championship. Walk out on a high note. And uh, do our last dance thing. Find our new team. You'll find out who is who is Cards Lakers. You know, the Phil Jackson equivalency. We're walking away from the Bulls. Who will be the Lakers? I don't I don't know if UC is actually gonna open up this year. But we're going somewhere. We didn't recruit this year. Like we are very definitively gone. The A D has not renewed our contract. We are out of here, regardless of the season's results. On the road against the Fighting Agalias, we do what we usually do to Agalia. Nice little eight-point victory there. Agalia is in our CBGM, if you're not aware, and he's uh, Usually likes to jump into chat during my streams and troll me a little bit. I haven't seen him yet today. Uh, might just be because I haven't streamed in forever and he's found a new stream to troll. But, you know, if you're out there, Galia, you catch it on the YouTube or whatnot. What's up? We won. All right, Wake Forest, 5-13 and 13 in ACC play. Yikes. Demon Deacon's not looking great. Ooh, 
Duke Houston put it on UCF, was it? 82 to, woo, 40 points. Beasley, 21. Mansell throwing it down. Collins throwing down the double-digit game. But Beasley, the man. And that leads us into the last game of the regular season against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Heading down to Atlanta. Let's finish off strong. This should this should win us the ACC. We can take a look real quick if we want to at the standings. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, yeah, and so, right, Duke 18-2. and two. We're at 18-1. and one. So if we lose, we would tie with them. And I don't know what the tiebreaker would be. But let's just go ahead and win the ACC again. Regular season ACC title on the line. The Tar Heels and the Yellow Jackets. Look at Robert Cardinal. Look at Alex Collins. I mean, everybody doing their thing but Beasley right there. And, all right, last dance. Regular season ACC champs. Doesn't mean a thing. Take it to the postseason, boys. Win that ACC tournament and then bring home another national championship. One more for Coach Cards before I walk out the door. Half this team is going to walk out the door this This North Carolina program is going to fall apart after I leave. Mansell's graduating. Beasley, Cardinal. uh, Beasley's definitely one and done. Cardinal might stick around. Uh, A lot of these guys are going to be out the door. They'll probably still make the tournament for a few years, and the prestige is probably in the high 90s. So they'll be all right. But this team as it stands, they're not winning the championship next year. I promise you that. Well, I don't promise you. I promise you a lot of stuff, and I'm usually wrong. But uh, they're not going to be as good as they were this year. How about that? New Mexico State still killing it out there. All right, get this ACC tournament going. We're on Wednesday. I don't think we won't play till Friday, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday will be our thing, assuming we win. Lou Williams. Louisville. 14 and 16. Maybe that job opens up. Maybe cards can uh maybe cards can rebuild Louisville for a minute to finish off our last few streams of college basketball 2021 for Draft Day Sports. Alright, let's see. We got Pitt in the first round. Now Louisville's still alive. They had to play Duke, so I doubt that worked out well for him. Duke number three in the country. You see unranked, but 22-10. and 10. Yeah, Duke took care of Louisville there. Fighting Agalias took out the Wolfpack. Virginia over Syracuse. And the number one, North Carolina Tar Heels. Number one in your hearts, number one in the polls, and number one as they move right past Pitt. So here we go against Virginia. Cavaliers. What do you got for us? Uh, who awaits? Is it Duke? No, it's the Fighting Agellias. Notre Dame. All right, so Notre Dame takes down Duke. We get the Cavs. The Cavs hit the road. Doug Beasley, 17-11. and 11. Robert Cardinal, Quentin Mansell. Man, if when those three guys show up, it's over. All right, here we go. Selection Sunday. We're we're probably a number one seed either way, but you know we want to put a, we've got plenty of banners up in the rafters already. Uh, we want to put another year on it, right? Like we want to put twenty forty one cards last season. Woo! Not even a question. That was a Ric Flair. That was a Ric Flair woo. Let's check it out. Who did what? Ha <laughs> ha! My boy Beasley. 7 for 10, 7 of 8 on the line, 15 rebounds. Beasley went just big boy Notre Dame. Big boyed him. Robert Cardinal and Beasley both had double doubles on the inside. And yeah, you look at the rest of the team, nobody else had to do anything. Beasley and Cardinal took care of it. Let's check out this selection show. I mean, we're obviously number one overall, easily. But yeah, we'll check it out. We'll watch your show. What do you got? Show it to me. Come on. All right, playing games. Indiana in a play-in game. 
Indiana's a possibility. What, are you kidding me? Missouri got the number one overall seed? The, the first number one is the number one overall, right? That's some nonsense. Give me a break. Because then the next... The next bracket will be the number four overall seed. So Wisconsin with the number with the fourth number one seed. And then I don't know. This is going to either be the two or three. Whatever. Now I'm just angry. So we did get a one seed. I don't know if it was the two or the three. Who we got? We got Texas Tech, New Mexico State. So one of our two losses looming as a three seed. Excuse me. One of our two losses looming as a three seed in our own bracket. And we get Texas Tech, which is the CBGM uh, terror. We get UC and Georgia. So a couple of teams here that you know would definitely be in the running for where I would like to go after this. All right, that's an interesting bracket for us. Let's see how this works out. Uh, what I will show you or at least look at with you. So if you remember earlier, I talked about how well these guys knew these offenses. They were all 10s in the preseason. Uh, after they got through the practices and into the early season, like November, December-ish, they were in like 30 to 35, I believe. And you can see now they're mostly approaching like 45. So these guys got about 10 to 12 points better on all of these offensive sets as they played through the year. Um, and... You can go back and look at the stream and compare who's playing versus who's not playing and see what kind of difference you get. Um, <clears throat> but they do get better as the year goes on. So with that being said, they're all except Beasley. Why is Beasley at 39? Oh, that's brutal. We're going to bump this up to like 70. I like it at 70. 70 I feel like is a nice sweet spot. But, of course, that's me tinkering with things with a team that only lost. Hey, what's up? Sharpie says thanks for streaming. Of course, bud. Uh, I enjoy streaming these games anytime I can get into it and do something interesting. The thought of just doing another North Carolina stream did absolutely nothing for me, so that's why I went so long without it. And then I thought, you know what? We're just going to do our last dance thing, our one last season at North Carolina, move somewhere else, and have fun rebuilding them. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, but, yeah, I'll stream anytime. So I'm hoping that that little bit of tinkering, now that those freshmen, like they always say, once you hit the NCAA tournament, those freshmen aren't freshmen anymore, right? And you can see that they're all approaching 50-ish on those ratings. So let's see if bumping it up and running a little bit more. Oh, and there's Beasley with 33. So we make the tweak, and right away, even though Beasley's the worst <laughs> on – all of our offensive sets. I believe he's the player on the team who knows our offense the least. He's the lowest rated player on the team on our sets, but he's so good. Uh, hopefully that means our guards are getting him the ball in better positions, right? So let's see how that works out. Here we go. LSU in the second round. It would be an absolute embarrassment to walk out here. You got to beat LSU. Beasley and Cardinal leading the way. All right, on to the Sweet 16. Uh, you know, they don't celebrate Sweet 16s in Chapel Hill. Oklahoma State. <clears throat> All right. The Tar Heels and the Cowboys in the Sweet 16. For the right to go to the Elite Eight. Who you got? Your boy! Tar Heels take a nice little 30-point win there. I didn't see how well any of these guys played. Uh, Collins did well. Cardinal with the double-double. Beasley didn't even get the double-double. Three for 11. Off night for Doug Beasley. Is it Doug Beasley? Yeah, Doug Beasley. I don't know why I doubted myself there. All right. On to the Elite Eight. The Dookie's still in it. Oh, the Dookie's still in it. 
Joe Shiat, Chris Flippin. I think half of those guys were on my team when we did the uh, the Pro League with Wolverine Studios. All right. Oh, my God. So we lost to New Mexico State early in the year. The Aggies beat us at home. And now we've got to play them on a neutral site just to get to the Final Four. All right, so I mentioned that our bracket was interesting, and here it goes. Uh, this is Shot at Redemption or Ultimate Flameout. It's the last dance. This Any game at this point could be my last as the head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Let's hope it's not today. Let's get our revenge against the Aggies. Let's show them who's the boss. Doug Beasley, where are you at? Quentin Mansell, where are you at? Get him! Beasley went off on him. Seven point victory. Redemption. Thank you. Moving on to the final four. Here we go, baby. All right. Stretch out. Deep breath. National championship or bust. Here we come. Final four is tomorrow. Got to get that save. <laughs> got to get that save. Who we got? Oh, Duke is still in it. Oh, Duke is still in it. This is going to be North Carolina Duke for the championship in the last dance. This is setting up perfect. It has to happen. First, we got to get past Temple. Temple's doing well, 34-4. and four. They've had a wonderful season. Duke's got to get past Wichita State. So let's see if the Blue Devils uh, hold up their end of the bargain. And they do, 85-74. to 74. All right, Duke is in the finals. Can we hold up our end of the bargain? The Tar Heels versus the Owls of Temple. Make it happen. Send us off. It's the last dance. The last season with UNC. It has to final. It has to be a UNC Duke final. It has to be. Don't lose it here. Oh my God, they lost it right there. What a letdown. Tell me you're not disappointed right now. It should have been North Carolina versus Duke for the final. Oh, my God. That's embarrassing. Ah, oh man. Where is, uh, in, in March Madness, don't the guys get to sit there with a the towel over their head for a while with, like, their head in their hands? How do you lose that game to Temple? you got to be kidding me. At least they beat Duke. Duke didn't win it. Final four run in our final season with North Carolina. That was a tough scene, Beardtown. Very tough scene. You know, Doug Beasley was heartbroken. Robert Cardinal, heartbroken. Quentin Mansell, the senior, stuck it out four years there. Um, you know, don't know what to say. It's a toxic environment. You can thank your athletic director for that. Uh, we're out of here. Cards is out of here. So is half my team. See you guys later. Let's check out the awards here. Individual awards. Aloysius Morris. Taurus Malone all over the place. Our, uh, our walk-off shot, we won the coach of the year, even though we did not win the national championship. First team All-American, Doug Beasley right there in the mix. No second teamers. Let's check out the ACC. So you can see our second teamers: Quentin Mansell, the senior; Robert Cardinal, the. I mean, he was. He felt like a double double machine at times. First teamers: Doug Beasley jumps in there along with Joe Shiat of Duke, a couple of Notre Dame boys, and the individual awards. Of course, I don't know why the Coach of the Year never wins the Conference Coach of the Year, but it never happens. If you've seen it happen, you know, post it for me. But, uh. This guy, Doug B. Oh, right, Doug Beasley. Player of the year, defensive player of the year, freshman of the year. Doug Beasley all over the place. The North Carolina Center takes home all the individual awards. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last dance. We're out as a Tar Heel. 
don't care about anything else. We're taking a new job in the offseason. Oh, absolutely brutal to go out in the Final Four like that. When you had it all set up. <sighs> Season review. See, where's our t Oh, right. Our goal is to win the championship. Whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. Our school prestige went from 100 to 98. We failed, and we definitely failed that because we didn't even try to recruit. Do I ever do a worst to first team? I've, I've done some journeymans. I've done... I'm trying to think of the worst team that I've won a championship with. I think I won a championship with, like, Georgia. Uh, the, like, super low 20 and 30 prestige teams, like, it's such a grind. Like, I, I know how to do it, but it's just a grind that I'm not interested in, to be honest. Uh, 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 Taurus Mullen won that. All right, players declaring for the draft. Beasley and Cardinal are both gone. No, no surprise at all. So, uh, I guess uh, Detmer will still be there. You know, the point guard. So, that's great. Let's check this out. Job hiring. Show head coach jobs only. What is available for us to go to? Some interesting jobs. What we're going to have to do here is grab ourselves a streamer beverage and think about this and talk about this. We've got a handful of people in chat. Everybody right there is your list of teams that we might take over. Start shouting out your recommendations. Like, let's hear it. Where do you want to where do you want to go? All right. Arizona's on probation. <laughs> Arizona's such an interesting team because you could totally just take over the way. NC State is available. Weren't they just like a top team? Uh, Temple, who just won the national championship. Their coach must have just done the thing where they walk off. Texas in the Big 12. VCU. Wichita State. Lots of interesting jobs out there. Where, Harvard? Uh, yeah, we could go to Harvard. Where do we want to go? Interesting situation here. Anybody in chat? What are you, what are you feeling here? Dayton could be interesting. It's right, like, prestige-wise, they're right in the mix. Close-ish to where I live. Decent facilities and academics, that would be an interesting one. Could be. That's a maybe. I always think DePaul would be interesting... Just because Chicago has so much talent, but, like, God, their prestige is low. The facilities suck. Colorado is always one of those interesting teams, but Agalia is already doing that one. Don't want to uh, step on his toes. Florida State could stay in the ACC. Or Georgia Tech, same deal. Kansas looking for a coach. I feel like I would end up, it would probably take me about five minutes at Kansas to end up in the exact same situation I was in at North Carolina where I was just winning too much to be really interesting. Uh, UMass, go back, run the uh, John Calipari, Marcus Camby, uh, was it JP Tre Trevieso? You know, we could run back to early 90s UMass. You never know. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> New Orleans Privateers. I've never even heard of that school. I've heard of a lot of college basketball schools. Yeah, I see Oregon State on the list. You know, Oregon State, their prestige sucks. 
Oregon takes all the best players out of that state. Washington takes all the best players out of Washington. Then you got UCLA, Arizona eating up everything out of the West. Oregon State is such a difficult job. I don't enjoy it. I've done it before, and I didn't enjoy it at all. The USC, on the other hand, would be kind of cool. But also, their prestige, wow, their prestige is really low. I didn't realize USC had prestige that low. Oh, that, hmm, is that interesting? That's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting, right? I mean, they're on probation. Their prestige is trash. But I feel like there's so much opportunity there, right? USC's a cool school. Temple just won. I'm not doing that. Texas, 95 prestige. Jesus. I would do Texas if they weren't if they were in like the 50s. I was hoping there would be like an IU or a UC or something like that on this list. There's really not. All right, so I like the idea of USC. Um, I could be talked into UMass, I suppose. I like. I really like the idea of Dayton. That's sort of my sweet spot. And I think it's between those three. I think it's Dayton, which would be, obviously, they're going to start off a little bit higher on the prestige. We're probably, you know, year one, you can start recruiting decent players into there and mold that into something you know, three, four years down the line. You're probably competing. Uh, I'm least excited about UMass. It would be extremely hard to get players to even visit that campus in USC is probably my very close second opinion. So between Dayton and USC, I, I just want to see two votes. Like, give me two votes. What are we thinking here in chat? If you're in here, just shout out your preference: South Car uh, Southern California, or Dayton. The, the Flyers. They got a cool arena. I've been in it. I drive past it all the time. Uh, their city is boring as could be, but the arena is really cool. I watched Louisville play a game there. Uh, shoot, when was that? That might have been like around 2011, 2010, something like that. Like the Terrence Williams, Earl Clark, the team, I think. I think they played there. I don't know if that was the year they were the number one overall seed where they ended up beating Arizona by like 40 and then losing to Michigan State. Or that might have been the year before or after. Uh, but that was, they played uh, their first round game up in Dayton. All right, Dayton or USC? Dayton or USC? We got Sharpie voting for Dayton. Where's the rest of you? There's... There's a handful more in chat. What are we thinking? Are we going to L.A.? Or are we sticking to Ohio? L.A., California, going to have way more recruits for us. A uh, lot bigger hill to climb out there. The prestige is much lower. If we jump over here to Dayton, we're about 20, 23, 24 points higher prestige-wise. Uh, much better record, much better facilities and academics. Not on probation, which is a plus. Academic standards are much more relaxed. USC is an A. This is a B minus. So not only is this probably easier academics wise, it's also easier prestige wise. Hmm. Noah's jumping in. He also likes Dayton. I asked for two votes. I got two votes. So 
The chat demands Dayton. We're flyers. We left North Carolina. We were there. We had a great run. We're headed to Dayton. Sticking to Ohio. Proud of the A-10. The Dayton Flyers. Let's apply. They're very happy to welcome us. As they should be. All right. Here we go. Now, now I'm excited to get into this offseason. Get building. Oh, my God. What is this roster? This is... Yikes. I think is the technical term for it. Yikes. What is this dude doing scoring 13 a game? Eh, maybe. Ugh. They're running the triangle. Five out in the shuffle. We can run the triangle in the shuffle, I suppose. We're not running the five out. Sorry. Prefer to go man, full court man. Yep, that's what we're going to work on. Practice time. Nothing on five out. Thank you very much. 10% on our zones. Uh, back that off to 10. Fifteen on both of these. No, so fifteen on our man offenses, ten on our zones, ten on our full court. Yeah, looks good. All right, welcome staff changes. Blah blah blah. What does our staff look like? Out of curiosity. So obviously, we're going to be doing the recruiting, but we also need another dude. Oh, God, these guys suck. Actually, 71 on recruiting isn't bad. 71K a year, what's our budget? 256. Okay. Oh, my God. Look at our assistants. This dude's making 12 a year. This dude's making 15 a year. And we're going to fire them both. They're so bad. Our recruiter making 71 a year. I think we're going to hold on to him. Yeah, Landis. That was Landis says, new team. What happened? He left. We got a new team. Uh, that was our last dance. Uh, we talked about it through the whole episode. That was my last hurrah with North Carolina. I was totally bored with that and we were leaving regardless so uh, we were down to either Dayton or USC and we ended up choosing Dayton we got multiple votes in chat for Dayton so proud of the A-10 here we are Dayton Flyers we're going to take them to new heights uh, but first we've got to get us some coaches in here like we need some help here guys we can't be the only coach that knows how to teach things and stuff So he's a first assistant making 53. I don't know that that works. Uh. Joe Meehan is a second assistant. What if I gave you 35 a year? And... What if we gave you 20? Nope, you're the third assistant. There we go. Let's run that bid around, see what happens. Yeah, Dayton's not bad. That's. It, it was sort of a thing, like, are we going to go with USC, who was, like, really, really bad? All right, we got both our coaches. Uh, USC was, like, 38 prestige I believe and uh, but they were on probation so that would have been a huge hill to climb in the pack which is 
pretty difficult. Uh, Dayton already sitting at 60-something prestige. A little bit easier conference. Not as hot of a recruiting bed. But, uh, you know, we got a we got a brand to build here in Dayton. So we'll see what we can do. I'm excited about it. I'm not excited about this year's results. I'm very excited about what we can do in recruiting this year, though. Really, really hoping we've got at least three scholarships available. Because this team sucks. I mean, these, they got two small forwards and a power forward. And everybody else is kind of garbage. This is... You know, he can rebound and sort of shoot inside. Not great. Yeah, not a great, uh, not a great look. Facilities are a B plus. Academics are a B minus. Okay. Yeah, I do like the color. I, I was looking for something like interesting color scheme wise. I like red. All right. So facilities budget. Mm, let's go budget. Facilities are already B plus. I think that's enough to compete in the A10 at the very least. Request denied, of course, whatever. Delete all emails. Move along. All right, let's get into this offseason. Let's get into some recruiting and see what kind of damage we can do. I feel like this team's close enough prestige-wise. We should be able to grab some, some decent prospects, some real program builders. I really think year four, year four, I think we're competing for Final Fours. If it, if it goes the way that I think it's going to go. I think it'll take us, you know, this first season is a complete wash. Second season is where we, like, get our guys out there. Uh, start getting them experience, start training them up. So third season hopefully is where we get, like, kind of over the hump. And then fourth season is where we're legit. That's my goal. That's what I'm explaining to the athletic director. Again, uh, Josh from Louisville looking for a head coach in real life. That's also my vision for the Cardinals. Um, give us three or four years. We'll be right there in national championships. If you're looking for a coach, if you're scrolling through YouTube, if you're looking through the GM Games Twitch feed for your next head coach right here, I got you. But on the really, really unlikely off chance that you're not doing that, uh, then I'll just continue coaching the Dayton Flyers. So, three scholarships, 130K, cool. Uh, yeah, UNC not going to be anywhere in here. We did not do anything with them recruiting-wise last year. And now it's time to show what we got. 130K. Ooh. Do, we, do we go national? I want to spend about 80k on reports. So, I could either grab a national report for 80 or grab Midwest, Southeast and America East for 90. We're not quite high enough prestige, I think, to get too far out of region. Let's do this. Let's set up um Midwest and Southeast. Let's just go for those two. That's 60. Let's take a basic. No, we don't want. If we're not going premium, we're not going anything. Let's just take this. Do I allow conference movement? I don't think that I have it enabled in this just so that uh, the conference, the teams stay in conferences that I recognize if I'm going to look for it or whatever. Like, I understand that it's realistic. Uh, if I was doing a first to worst type situation, I definitely would do that. But that's not what I'm doing. So let's take a look just quickly at the transfers, see if there's anything we should be interested in. Uh, that doesn't do much for me. No, absolutely not. 
Uh, no info on you. We're not going to have info on them either. No, we're good. We don't need transfers. Thank you. Appreciate you. Skip all those sessions. <clears throat> and I'm excited to get this Dayton team going. And see, this is what's cool. Because, like, with North Carolina, like, of course you're going to do good. It's not like I'm... Uh, Again, I don't pretend that there's not people that are way better at this game than me because there absolutely are. But I'm not an idiot about it. So, like, if I go to North Carolina or Kansas, like, I'm not going to lose. So it's just so boring. It'll be interesting to take a team like Dayton and and just sort of experience that, that journey, right? We'll get them there. It, and like I said, it'll only take uh, – take that back. There's no guarantees. They could always fire me, right? But they want me to get into the NCAA, finish top half of the conference, win 15 games. They're not asking a ton. But their team kind of sucks. So I think I can do all this stuff in the second year. I don't know what will happen this year. No idea. All right, we're going to go to Indy, Chicago, and Memphis. So that will stick with all the same reports that we bought. And with the prestige in this, you know, in the 60s-ish, we could have thought about East Coast Jam. But, you know what? I want to go straight to the top. Going straight to it. Let's see what we get. Let's take a look at the 2041 Pro Draft. Uh, just because I want to see if my North Carolina guys. Beasley went 7th. Ooh, and then look at Temple. Travis Brown and Aloysius Morris going back-to-back. -back. Georgia with a couple of top guys. So Robert Cardinal is our second player taken. Quentin Mansell also goes in the first round. So three players from North Carolina in the first round. Nothing in the second round. Okay. Well, Cardinal and Beasley were the only two that went pro, and then Mansell might have been the only senior. So I... I guess that makes sense, right? Uh, yeah, let's delete all that. Let's see what we got. Uh, we, we've we got three scholarships to work with, and if we need to, like this team, there really looks like there's uh, plenty of work to do. So if we need to, we can cut some guys. Uh, what do we want to look at? Uh, let's, let's do my thing. Ten players each position. National region, full recruit list. We might want to change this region. Okay. Let's do this. Let's let's stick to Midwest first and see what kind of interest we've got. All right. We're going to add him because I think we can compete. This is probably a non-qualifier. Do I want a Juco point guard? We have absolute crap for point guards, so I will add him to the list and think about it. I'm not adding him, no. All right, so that's six. Nobody in the Southeast is interested? All right. Uh, we'll leave the five stars alone, and we're going to jump in here. The Juco, yes. The 3.1, the 3.2. All right. We got a couple of extra point guards there. We really need a point guard. Jerry Shyatt, yeah, you should be interested. One, two, three. That's definitely an unqualifier. It's going to bounce back and forth between these regions.
So out of the southeast, we're just picking up guys that are very highly rated, who are very clearly going to qualify. And then we're coming back over here and sort of living in our home region for now. Uh, yeah, he'll qualify, so we can at least make that call. He's in. You know what, I'll take the junior college guy if he's four stars. Yes, yes, all this, yes. Power forward looks great. <clears throat> Ooh. This looks sketchy. All right, that's our list. All right, so let's see if we can at least... Can we get home? Yeah. Yes, campus visits. Everybody's going to join us on our campus visits. Let's do it. Uh, and we got a ton of money, so we can just watch film on these folks. Watching film is not something we necessarily need to do, but going to do it because I have the money. We're going to we're going to see them in camps is why we don't need the film. Love to grab a five-star dude right out of the gate. Come on, Aaron. You love us, right? No, you don't. <laughs> he didn't care for us at all. Aaron's like, "Uh, yeah, I didn't like that." No. All right, so these two guys at least appreciated it. That's cool. Let's get through these two summer camps. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Larry Watson, top 10 at Indy. Yes, sir. Not in his top 10. That's no good. No bueno. This dude didn't stand out, so we really don't want him. We don't want him. Didn't stand out. Charlie Lee. Decent. Let's go through here. Let's see if anyone really did well that actually has some interest. All right, so top 25, Fernando Ward. on our second page all right so this guy was top 25 let's go ahead and host him scout him live call him up what do you got fernando all right so fernando would be a good pickup see if anyone else did well at indy decent Uh, we're probably back into we're getting very close to the top of the list again these guys didn't even go to indy no need looking at that let's grab the guys who are decent all right all right so augustine has no interest but was top 25 we'll try that uh, he has no interest and was just decent. He didn't stand out. Didn't stand out. No. All right, so anybody that actually has interest and did decent, like Kraft, we're going to bring him in. All right. Appreciated, appreciated, and enjoyed it. All right, we're going to want some of those guys. That's for certain. Let's see. Cook did not go to Indy. Didn't stand out. Where are some of the other decents? Top, all right, that's Ward. He's all in on location. He's from Illinois. 
So that's at least in region, which is a good thing. We can go in there and pitch that. That's probably, let's go ahead and scout him live and offer him a scholarship. That's our top target. Estelle Williams. Let's host him, see if we can get a little bit of interest generated here. A couple quick texts, now I'll lose my number. All right, cool. Do we have any more decents? No. All right, we need to get through the Midwest camp. Still got two hosts. All right. Start off on Maddox here. Decent at Indy. Decent at Chicago. Ugh. Didn't stand out of Chicago. Get off our list, Charlie Lee. Get out of here. All right. Kraft was top 10 at Chicago. Decent. Didn't stand out. Get off the list, Rod Johnson. Get off the list, Tony Williams. Top five. Of course, Fernando Ward was. He's so great. All right, we need Ward. Decent. Didn't stand out. Get off our list. Didn't stand out. Go. Go. Top 10, Lonnie Latham. All right, so here is one of these dudes. Where's Lonnie Latham? <laughs> Shooting guard. All right, so we've already offered Fernando Ward, but Lonnie Latham's a very good one. We'll get him on campus. This could be the type of guy that um, that maybe if like Ward and some of those other top players go to bigger schools, maybe Latham's the kind of guy that we bring in, right? All right, let's see how that week goes. Enjoyed it. Cool visit. Didn't think it was... Oh, Williams didn't think it was worthwhile. That sucks. Donnie Maddox was decent. Oh, wait. Is this a dead period? Yeah, we're just going to skip that. Carl Thompson is warm. We're not warm on him. Sorry. So our offers are to Ward, who has jumped up on the ratings. Uh, he's not hot on anybody yet that I can see, so that's not a huge problem. Kraft is warm on Indiana and Butler, so that is a bit of a problem. Maddox was decent. Yeah, let's host him. Didn't stand out. Hardworking kid. Have we had the Southeast Camp? Oh, Southeast Camp. Let's see what the Southeast Camp looks like. And America East. We don't have any America East on our list, but I would like to know how Thompson did. Didn't stand out at Memphis. Get off our list. Oh, all right. This is a JUCO. That's fine. We we should actually host and scout the JUCOs. 
Because we're hoping the JUCOs can just like kind of bounce in and already be developed a little bit and do some work. Oh, he's hot on Tennessee. My word. Let's go ahead and bring him in and see what he thinks about Dayton. Right? Decent at Chicago. With no interest. Get off the list. Didn't stand out. Didn't stand out. Get off the list. All right, craft. So that's basically where our recruiting starts is with craft. Cook. Didn't stand out. Get off the list. Cookie Watson. That's a fun name. Decent hard worker. Mm. Sure. Come on in. Trying to get what we can on these JUCOs. He was decent. He'll come. Let's go ahead and bring him in. See what happens. Need some of these guys to turn hot. Or at least warm. Like get off cool. Get on to warm. We're still only in July though. So we've got a full month of August before we got to get serious. I'm really interested in this one. I don't know why he's not interested in us. It's depressing. Bring all the JUCOs in. Dun, dun, dun. Decent at Memphis, sure. <sighs> Top 25 at Chicago, definitely. Get everything unlocked. Talk about the parents. How you doing? What do your parents think? Still Carl Thompson's very interested and we just have no interest in him. Was anybody else like really good at camp? Top 25? Anything? Top 10 at Chicago. Oh right. Wani Latham. You know what, Lonnie? We're going to just go ahead and offer Lonnie a scholarship. Like, why not? Because I don't see anybody else out here that really deserves it. James Smith does. Another shooting guard. Gee whiz. Another shooting guard. Top 10. Stacy Taylor. Stacy Taylor all the way down here. That's definitely a visit on the next uh, next week. All right, let's see how these visits go. Now we're getting some interest. I don't know that it's in the right guys, but interest nonetheless. Juco, Sheridan King, top 25 at Chicago. All right, Stacy Taylor gets a host. You didn't stand out. Didn't stand out. Get off the list. Top 25, Maxwell gets a host. Whoa. Stacy Ta Stacy Taylor declined the visit? You're in region. You're a three-star player, and you're declining the visit? Get out of here. Didn't stand out. Get off the list. All right, Stacy Taylor, you're kind of making me angry. All right, so Maxwell is a top 25 Chicago player. 
we should probably throw him a scholarship offer. We should decide which of these shooting guards we're going to go with and cut bait on the other one probably is what we should do, but not what I'm going to do just yet. Uh, for now, I'm just going to start hosting. We got $40,000. We got a few weeks to go. We're just going to host some guys and see what happens, see if we pick up anybody that I didn't notice at first. I don't know. So, like, so, host those three guys. Boom, another week. Oh, look at that, Lonnie Latham. We're warm on him. I think Lonnie Latham's going to be our dude. Oh, look at Fernando Ward. Notre Dame. Get out of here, Notre Dame. Leave our boy alone. About Kraft, he's hot on Indiana. Now he's cool on us, but we're at least... His top cool school. We're going to keep going after him. I'm going to grab a streamer beverage. We're going to finish off this recruiting and see what happens here. For our Dayton Flyers. We're just hosting people to kind of kill time. So in-home visit should start next week. Is that right? Yes. All right. So let's just browse here. Craft the power forward. He's hot on three schools, warm on three more. That's a stretch to think that we could be in on him. So as much as it pains me, I'm going to revoke that offer. Now with Ward, we're right in the mix. So we're very much sticking with that. He was top 25 at Indy, top 5 at Chicago. That would be a fantastic get. We're not favored to get him by any means, but we're going to stay on Fernando Ward. He could definitely be a program changer. Lonnie Latham, we're the only school he's warm on. He was top 10 at Chicago. So we're very much staying on him as well. That'll give us two guards if we landed both of them. Uh, obviously, there's no guarantees with regard to Ward. Latham feels a little bit safer. And then Isaiah Maxwell. He was top 25 at Chicago. We're the only school warm on him. And that's, that's where our other offer is going to go. Feels pretty easy to me. I don't feel like I need to explain it too awfully much. Uh, where is Stacy Taylor? Still declining to visit us. Why? Where are you going? You're not interested in. We're our. We're second on your list, and you won't visit. What a jerk. What is this dude's deal? All right, cool. Uh, we got our offers out. Three offers, two shooting guards, one power forward. Mix in a match, and let's see what happens here. Still got all three scholarships out, so nobody is committed already before we could do our in-home. Uh, our boy out of Illinois, we're definitely going to visit you. Talk about location. All good. Next offer. Lonnie Latham, you're also big into location. That's what we're sending you. Maxwell, again, location. And now let's take a look at the list and see. Like no interest there. Top 10 player at Indy. Jeez, I'd love to be in on a dude like this. Out of Wisconsin. But a power forward. Let's see. Can we mix it up a little bit with our uh, top five at Memphis, top 25 at Indy? Delvin Augustine in the Southeast. What about Midwest? What can we grab out of the Midwest? 
Aaron Johnson has no interest. Watson is kind of redundant if we grab the other power forward. Marky Abney. Decent at Chicago. No. I'm just looking for like an extra visit, right? Uh, let's just make it to the Juco. Oh, Ronald Benham. Oh, he's not interested in anything. Let's go talk about location. See how that week of recruiting goes. All right, so no scholarships available. That's a good thing. Benham is hot. Fernando Ward is hot. We're in the top three. Lonnie Latham is, we're the only one hot on him. Beautiful. Where is Dayton, Florida? Where are you seeing Dayton, Florida at? Who is this guy? Why is he hot on us? He was decent at Chicago. All right, big man. Maxwell, hot. Only one hot. Stick with it. And you know what? Let's 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 go with this a little bit. I mean, he was decent at Chicago. I don't. That's probably better than a JUCO, right? Let's just play it out. I have no idea where. I've never heard of. No, Dayton's not in Florida. Dayton's in Ohio. Dayton is. 30 miles, give or take, north of Cincinnati. Oh, that's a tough schedule. Number four, Wisconsin and Badgers. Number 14, West Virginia. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dayton is in Ohio, 30-ish miles north of Cincinnati on 75. Uh, if you kept going... I don't know. I think you eventually get to like Toledo. No, it has nothing at all to do with Daytona Beach, Florida. <laughs> nothing at all. It's 100% Ohio. Uh oh, we got commitments. Hello. No scholarships still. So, at the very least, none of our guys have committed elsewhere. But what do we got? We got Fernando Ward. Your boy's coming in hot. Look at this. Top 25 at Indy, so one of the best 25 players in the country. He was top five at Chicago. He's going to be a Dayton Flyer next year. That's beautiful. What else we got? What else you got? Lonnie Latham, going to be a Dayton Flyer. He was top 10 at Chicago. Little bit under the radar type of prospect. Really going to fill out that guard spot. So our sh our two guard spot is set. Two guard is set. We got two of them. Top 25 in Indy. And then uh, like both of them top 10 in Chicago. So that's beautiful. Mm. All right. Maxwell's still hot on us. We're the only one hot. He's top 25 at Chicago. So let's just... Take a quick peek at who else is hot. This dude who was decent at Chicago, so not as good as Max Will. Juco. Hmm. Do you go with the Juco? No, we've already got two guards. We've got small forwards for days, right? Armstrong and Wise. Wise is at least... A sophomore, four-star. So Wise will be around. We throw in the two shooting guards we just grabbed. We throw in the power forward that we have. We need the power forward. We need this dude right here, Isaiah Maxwell.
and we will go talk to this guy again just to stay in it to win it but I think we land Maxwell ooh do we make a cut and try to pick up Moral yes I think that's a good idea I think I should have already done that we should still have one more week of visits though I'm gonna make a cut and try to pick up Moral Maxwell signed. All right, we got three. Moral is still available. We're still the only school he's not cool on. All right, so all these guys theoretically have potential. Farmer. You look like hot garbage as a junior. And you have the lowest potential out of any scholarship player on the roster. And the dude's 7'4". Like, you can't go wrong picking up 7'4 centers. Right? Isn't that a rule? Let's see if we can pick that up. Come on, baby. Bring it on home, Moral. Check out this class. Fernando Ward, the four-star. Actually a top 100 prospect. Top 25 at Indy. Top 5 at Chicago. Fantastic. Program-changing type of guard when you're talking about a program like Dayton. All these guys should be four-year guys, theoretically. Everybody else down in the 200s, all three stars. But first of all, look at Isaiah Maxwell. He is top 25 in Chicago. Cordell Morrill, he was decent at Chicago. So, you know, a lot to look up to. And then Lonnie Latham, top 10 at Chicago. Uh, we went straight up Ohio, Ohio, Illinois, Illinois. Staying in the Midwest here, this is this is a great foundation. This is exactly what I thought that we could do uh, in our first year here with a with a team in the 60s of prestige. Uh, Fernando Ward's going to be fantastic. All these other guys are going to be great supporting players, and this is the first step down the road, right? Next year, we're going to bring in another class with three to four players exactly like this. They're all going to contribute. And then, like I said, year three, year four, like, guys like this can compete for Final Fours. They're not going to be the favorites, but they can definitely compete for it. So this is exactly Taco Fall 2.0. I don't know about all that. But regardless, these are the type of guys that you can build programs with, and we're going to be well on our way. Throw in... All of this with the small forward Terrell Wise that we already have. Fantastic outside shooter. Uh, very good rebounder from the small forward position. Effective defensively. Hopefully he gets better at it. Like, we can make this work, right? This is a team. Uh, I like it. This is this is what I wanted to get. I don't want to have, like, the blue chip. We're going undefeated every single season team. So I'm glad we got out of North Carolina. We're back at our roots with Dayton in Ohio, recruiting in the Midwest, bringing home decent recruiting classes. Here we go, baby. I am going to have to stop it here. We got our recruiting class. We're going to get into the games next time. Next time we're going to try to get the games and then another recruiting class, maybe two seasons worth of games, so we can see that first class of recruits here uh, in action. But we're not going to see them tonight. Going to call it a day. I had an absolute blast uh, streaming Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2021 once again. Hopefully it's not the last time. Hopefully we get a few more. Hopefully we see these Dayton Flyers uh, winning some national championships before we get into Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022, which will definitely be coming soon, which I absolutely promise to you that I will stream. But for now... 
It was a good day. I appreciate everybody in chat. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you for directing me to Dayton after, uh, you know, we had a little bit of crisis of where in the world are we going to be coaching next year. Uh, so thanks, guys. I hope you all had half as much fun as I did. I had an absolute blast calling it a day. Any questions, hit me up in Discord, YouTube, chat, comments, whatever you want to do. Um, that's it. Thanks for coming by. See y'all next time.